All right, so I guess I'm bringing us in. Welcome to the Georgia Southwestern University Georgia College soccer game on this rainy Saturday, the October 15th. Uh-huh. It is 2.58. We have almost exactly two minutes until kickoff. And this is the Bobcats. How many times have we played the Hurricanes? Uh, I couldn't give you the exact number, but I do know that the overall total score combined from all those games, 41-1 to one Bobcats. <laughs> so hopefully it will be a close game. And I'm Angie Morian, by the way, and uh, Sam Jones is, is sitting next to me, helping me out with the broadcast and making things awkward. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Doing my best I can. By the way, folks, welcome to the swamps in Millersville. It is a yucky day. It is absolutely miserable. Drizzle coming down. It is very, very overcast. There is not a piece of sunlight in sight, but hopefully that doesn't mess things up too much here. The field is still looking pretty okay yeah, for this one. We've got the cameras up under the stand, so we're hoping to keep them dry. So sorry if if it, the camera angles aren't as good as you were hoping, but <laughs> that's what we're going to have to do to keep our equipment alive for the rest of the season. We've also got a new timer clock for this game. We're starting it out, seeing how you like it. So give us a comment on there or shout on Twitter to see if you like that. Um, hopefully it'll, it'll let you know how far we are along in the game um, so that we don't have to keep telling you because yeah, oftentimes we forget. Absolutely. Bobcats coming today, by the way, 4-4-1, four, 1-4 four and one, one and four in the PVC. Georgia Southwestern enters today 3-9, and 0-7 oh and in the Peach Belt Conference. They haven't won a conference game since back in 2010. So tough sledding for Georgia Southwestern so far. They have two wins against NCAA opponents so far this year. Overall, though, they're three and nine. Those two wins came against LaGrange and Emmanuel. They also took out Tacoa Falls earlier in the season. Bobcats come in after another tough loss over in Alabama just a few days ago. They went to Montevallo and lost another tough one in overtime, minute one nil to the Falcons. Falcons get an early goal in overtime, very much like the Pembroke game just a few weeks ago right here in Milledgeville. Georgia College lost that one 2-1 to one on a very early overtime goal. So some tough times for the Cats. We'll see if they can get back on track. Today's a good day to do it. Can't mess around too much, though. We talked a little bit about the struggles of Georgia Southwestern. However, there are a few players on this team that can make some things happen. Ella Hawkins and Kayla Owens, both with six goals. That's good for third in the Peach Belt Conference for each of them. So two very talented players. If Georgia Southwestern can filter the ball in a little bit, maybe Georgia College struggles with the range, struggles to get their formation right, struggles to get the ball moving towards the net, then maybe Georgia Southwestern can pull one out here. Can't get complacent. I think that's the big thing today for the Cats. If they get a little too uh, steady here, if they get a little too confident, could be some problems from the Hurricanes. Yeah, and H Sam was talking about how Hawkins and Owens have six goals each on the season. Both of those are ranked in the Peach Belt Conference highs. The, the high for the conference is from North Georgia, Miss Van Horn. She has nine goals so far. And then you go down three more players, and you'll see Hawkins and Owens tied at third for that stat. Starting lineups being announced now, and while they do that on the field, we'll go ahead and do that right here. Angie, you want to go ahead and give us today's starting lineups? Sure. First, we'll do the Bobcats for you. We have Ashley Graham in the goal. Um, she's been starting for us primarily, as you can hear the cheers. Um, we're getting ready to announce the Bobcats coming on. Ashley's coming on the field right now. Bobcats are wearing bright pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Day here at Bobcat Field. So we have Ashley in goal, and then Elise Schwartz, Millie York, Sarah Miller, Amanda Ferry, Sol Baldessini, Casey Hamilton, Raggy Diagnodorter. Did Very I do nice. that right? That's well done. That's the best we've had all season. Uh, nice. I'm glad. Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Great. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, we have Ra and Anna Michon. Close. Close. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Amanda Bartholomew and Emily Wilhelm, who's been our captain for the season as well. Um, Sam, do you want to give the Hurricanes starting sure. lineup? For the Georgia Southwestern State University Hurricanes out of America's Georgia, Lee Gowan starts in between the sticks. Cheyenne Busby will be in the back line. Courtney Keeley, Kayla Owens, one of those people with six goals on the Southwestern team. Jessica Bingen, Ella Hawkins, Mercedes Benitez, Kanisha Roberts, Bree Rita, Haley West, Miranda Taylor, and Chateria Crawford 
make up the rest of the Hurricanes lineup. We're almost to National Anthem time. We'll go ahead and let you listen in on that. Back with you in just a moment for kickoff here on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. National Anthem wraps up here at Bobcat Field as we turn away from the restrooms and face the field. <laughs> Had to uh, turn around to the nearest government building as no flag is able to be flown in the rain. It's happened before at a Bobcat soccer game. Had to do it back when UNC Pembroke came to town for the Peach Belt Conference Tournament a year ago. Something I'll never forget, having to turn around and face a restroom. I've had to do it twice now here as a member of the Georgia College Sports Information Department. So. Learn something new every day there, Angie. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, before we had the National Anthem, we had a moment of silence for one of the professors at Georgia College who passed away unexpectedly last week or, yes. or earlier this week. Um, she was involved in a car accident with her brother and husband on one of our uh, local country roads here. She was an exercise science professor. Uh, her name was Allison Everett. And uh, as Al Weston said over the public address announcing, he said that a lot of our student athletes have gone through that program, the exercise science program. So that affects a lot of our athletes and it affects our school and city. So it's something to keep aware of. Absolutely. Prayers and good thoughts towards the Everett family as they try to get back to normalcy. But we are just about ready to go here at Bobcat Field on Pink Out Day. Like Angie said, Bobcats in the all pink tops today. Blue shorts, blue socks, Georgia Southwestern. Lines up in a blue and gold kit with blue stripes running horizontally down the front. And the Bobcats have started a rave 
<laughs> on the far side. <laughs> it's like a neon sign over there. They've got that bright pink, and then they have neon green pennies for the, the ones not on the field. And it, I feel like I need sunglasses, <laughs> even though there's no <laughs> sun out right now. <laughs> They're playing Sandstorm back in the background, too. It's like a South Carolina football game <laughs> over there. Absolutely <laughs> the loosest I've probably ever seen a Coach Hope Clark team. They're extremely <laughs> loose in warm-ups, too. But having an absolute party over there on the far end. Hopefully that continues on the field. Maybe sometimes uh, this team's been a little tight, especially getting forward. There's been struggles uh, for a long time, really, for the Bobcats getting the ball in the back of the net. Hopefully they get back on track today against Georgia Southwestern. Just about ready for a kickoff here at Bobcat Field. One thing to be aware of as you're watching is the lines around the field are bright pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Day, so just keep that in mind. A little bit more difficult for some of us to see. might be difficult for us to see, too, so we apologize in advance. Southwestern with possession early taken away by the Cats. It's up to Raleigh at Anamashan. Anamashan makes a move in the middle now, worked out wide and given away by number 19, Ragnar Peter Bianna daughter. Ball will swing out again, Elise Schwartz with the ball at her feet. She tried to get it to Raggy. Raggy eventually reclaimed it. Up to Schwartz. Schwartz cross in towards Bartholomew and score. That easy. One nothing. And I called it. And you called it. <laughs> <laughs> you really did call it. I uh, said Bartholomew before the game, so everyone on the sports information staff owes me dinner. No, that's not um, how that that's works. That's, I'm sure that's how that works, actually. Now, that might actually be the second fastest goal in Bobcat history. I would because think so. we had the, the fastest goal this season by Maddie Steven, who I chose to make the first goal today. She had a 25 second goal over an Aiken, um, which was incredible. And easy enough. I, I doubt we were more than 40 seconds into this one. Oh, yeah. Bartholomew took a cross. It was some poor defending by Southwestern. Just flipped it up and over the keeper. And very quickly she scores. Now, Anamashan has a chance to make a move. Anamashan working on the top of the box, and Southwestern takes it away. Bobcats will get it right back, though. See what they can do with it. Miller charging forward. Miller. Bartholomew. We'll play it back. Ball to Simi, gets it back out wide to Miller, back into Bartholomew. Cutting inwards, taken away by Southwestern. Ball will bounce up in the air, reclaimed by the Hurricanes. Now we talked about how wet this ball is because, and yes, it just misted today, but the, the field is a nice shade of washed out green uh. from that dew. And the ball it has to be getting wet from, from rolling around on the grass and from the rain coming down. So it's definitely going to be slick, going to make it a little harder to possess the ball. Did you ever but play so soccer, far, Sam? I did when I was young, very you young. you like playing in the rain? I did. I enjoyed it. I, I like uh, getting a little bit messy out there. But, uh, you know, I didn't play enough to tell you too much the effects <laughs> on the team out there today. But I know it definitely will make it a little bit slippery. Make it hard to defend. Might have seen some of that with... Americus' back line, or excuse me, Georgia Southwestern's back line on the Bartholomew goal. By the way, Bartholomew, her third goal of the season for the Bobcats. The transfer from VCU doing a nice job up front. Miller plays a cross in, intercepted. Southwestern going out wide. Courtney Keeley plays it back. In the middle, it's Bree Rita. She'll play it to her center back. Out wide, number 14, Miranda Taylor with some space. Coming over is Miller. She's megged. Here comes Taylor. Taylor plays it forward. Intercepted by York, but given back away. And again, the Bobcats struggling to get possession back here. Kayla Owens almost gave it away for Southwestern. She'll get it right back here. Owens. Edge of the box, making some shifty moves. Owens, Owens coming through, and it's cleared away by Schwartz. That was a really nice move from Georgia Southwestern there to, to use. She, I mean, she was had three defenders against her, mm -hmm. and she somehow maintained possession to get a corner kick out of this. So that's a positive to take away from this game, even though they let a goal go by early on. See why Owens has six goals. She's very, very shifty with the ball at her feet. Corner coming in, and 
Bounced around for a second. Finally cleared away by the Cats. Hope we can get out on the counter. Raggy up towards Anamashan. Might be too heavy. Anamashan can't get around the defender. It deflects off the fullback for Southwestern. That's number two, Cheyenne Busby. Throw in for the Cats right in front of us. Baldessini charging forward. Charging hard forward. Baldessini got a little too carried away. Bobcats have to be careful here because, yes, it's nice to see them lose, but they can't let the, what was it, 41 to 1 career record against the school be, make them flimsy, I guess you could say, sure. not not up to the par that they are. By the way, 42 1. 42 now, 1. Keeping track that's at home. true, that's true. Bobcats have never seemed to struggle with Southwestern, but this is a good team. Still a long way to go. A lot of soccer left to be played. Now just getting to the 40-minute mark at half number one. Southwestern seems to keep pushing forward. And we'll see this with the Bobcats. A lot of times they'll score and immediately retreat into park the bus mode. And sometimes I think that hurts them more than helps them. So they're going to try to get out on the counter a lot today, and they might have a chance to do it here. Hamilton forward up towards Bartholomew. Bartholomew. Working around the defender, absolutely blows by her. Bartholomew, forward too far to Anamashan. Back to Bartholomew, shot, deflected. Rock comes up and tries to take it back away. Long shot attempt from Hamilton, too far. Three points in football, <laughs> none in soccer. As we wait for this, is it a free kick? Is that the right, correct term for this what's happening? This would be a goal kick right A goal now. kick, okay. So as we wait for this goal kick, I have some updates on Bobcat Volleyball. They are up in Greenville, South Carolina, playing the Peach Belt Conference South Atlantic Conference Crossover Tournament. They split action yesterday against, uh, and now I need to know the names, I can't remember, but they split action yesterday, and now they just lost in the tie-breaking fifth set against Lincoln Memorial. They had a really tough battle there, um, and... That was Lincoln Memorial was a really good team. I think they've only lost two or three games this season. So so that was a promising loss, I guess you could say, for the Bobcats. They sure. play Carson Newman in 45 minutes. So we'll keep you updated on that throughout this game. Bobcats continue to push forward, but can't get a shot on frame right now. Booted forward by York. Bartholomew got pushed a little bit. No call, though. Just a light nudge. That one got through Bartholomew's legs. Here comes Southwestern. Taylor on the edge being fought off by Baldessini. Baldessini takes the ground. I really hope we see a lot of sliding today. The ground is so That's slick. perfect for it, isn't it? That I, yeah. I mean, maybe they could slide five yards. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought there might have been a free kick award there instead. It's a throw in. Baldessini lost her balance and fell in. Miranda Taylor took her down, but no call from the ref. Forward to Bartholomew, heavy touch. Baldessini working hard to get the ball back, and Bob gets immediately to give it away again. Very little possession so far. I would say Southwestern probably has the brunt of possession so far. Yet they still find themselves down one nothing as Miller caroms forward. Seems like there's a lot of blue and gold around those three Bobcat players right there. They could have made something out of it if, if they had gotten one open man closer in. I was just about to say, the Bobcats need a little more width in their attack. They're getting it right now. Forward, up towards Anamashan. Anamashan, edge of the box. Raleigh got Anamashan working through and doesn't go out of play. Instead, knocked out a touch. Throw in for the Cats. You know, you have a an ally on changing the name to Cats more you frequently. You mean Thundercats? No, just Cats. Gretchen okay. Chromedick, our volleyball coach and, and assistant, Stephen Brown, loves saying Cats. Uh, it, it's an easier, it's an easier, uh, I can't even get the words out of my mouth. It's easier to say. <laughs> like, that's all I'm trying to say. You can't even say that. No, no. <laughs> but I can say cats. I can say it multiple times. As the cats move forward, 
Hamilton coming up. One of the two holding midfielders for the Bobcats today. Hamilton and Baldessini always excellent in defense for Georgia College. They facilitate the attack, and now the attack is up towards Rockney Theater of Yana Daughter. Oh, nice. There you go. Thank you. Did you, did you take Icelandic classes for No, that? I've been practicing that for two years now. <laughs> Amanda Bartholomew takes the throw and sends it right back to Schwartz. In the middle, Anna Michon. Anna Michon can't find a pink shirt. Can't find the ball. Taken away by Southwestern. Right now we're looking at four shots for Georgia College and one for Southwestern. I'm assuming that one shot might have been the, the trickle in from the corner kick. Yeah, and here's our first foul today. Doesn't look like the Canes are too happy about that. Uh, Owens takes ball to see me the ground. Ball to see me been extremely aggressive so far today. Miller and acres of space. Miller coming through. Long shot at that. Might have been a cross. I don't really know quite what she was thinking there. Got caught in between, I think, between a cross towards or a pass up towards Riley out on the shot and the shot. Yeah, it looked a little too high to be a pass, but too wide to be a shot. And of course, you also the ball very slick, like we said, could have just been a miss hit. Bobcats get the ball back. Yana Daughter. Ball to Cini. Sarah Miller. Seeing a lot of the ball already. Schwartz. Rough tackle there, but Yana Daughter hangs on to it. Anamashan gets it forward to Elise. Elise Schwartz coming through. Cross towards Bartholomew. Deflected. Schwartz recovers. That was deflected and goal kick. by number 13, Haley West, for the Canes. That is one thing Georgia Southwestern has been doing well is, is getting those blocks right close to the box up there. Oh, well, stopping the Bobcats from making it two or to three or two or three. Two or three to nothing. For those of you tuning in to us instead of the Georgia game, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure you are, Georgia just lost to Vanderbilt. On homecoming. On homecoming. <laughs> Fun times in Athens. The Bobcats are up. I don't know what the Bulldogs <laughs> are doing. Sam's just trying to to ease his worries about his, his team that lost. No, no, I'm not, not my team. They're not your team. I don't go there. <laughs> I go to Georgia College. We're up. <laughs> I mean, this is college football if you want to do it that way. We, sh we sure can. <laughs> I think we will. One nil Bobcats. We'll love the second, though. They got the first one extremely quickly. Amanda Bartholomew takes the ball away after some shaky defending at the back and just flicked it over the hands of the keeper. You say they want to... Oh, there's a shot. Yeah. By was that Soul Ball to Cini? It was Soul, and Soul just missed it. She knew it immediately, too. She score, scored an absolute worldie a few games ago against UNC Pembroke. Took it from about 30 yards out and took her left foot and booted it into the upper right corner. No such luck that time. Now, i got to wonder what, what – Southwestern's goalie was thinking there. I would have wanted her to punt it further out than just a line drive to mm -hmm. a back line defender there. Um, Let the Bobcats keep it on their side. Well now Southwestern has a chance to flip the field. Before they tried to get it towards Owens. Instead taken away by Georgia College. Amanda Ferry in the middle working around the defender. Barry has space for Bartholomew, and she paid it to her back shoulder instead of in front of her. Bobcats had some space there. Missed opportunity. It looked like that ball went through a Bobcat, a Cane, and the ref mm -hmm. <laughs> legs there. The ref subbing in for one of the teams, I guess. The honor daughter. Catch of the box has it taken away. Bobcats are just taking the beat with a hammer approach right now. They're going to keep running right at Georgia Southwestern until something goes in, I think. This one had a chance to. Instead, it went over the goal line. 
It looks like she yeah, was looking Nicole for uh, Amanda Ferry there, right up front in the goal. Mm -hmm. If it had just been kicked a little bit more to the left, might have been a nice shot there. It's a very defensive lineup for the Cats. Look at the midfield. Be on a daughter, Ferry, Hamilton, and Baldessini. All pretty defensive-minded players. Of course, Raggy is known to score a few here and there, but not necessarily a player who gets forward a whole heck of a lot. She moved forward this time, though, up at the top with Raleigh Anamashan. Anamashan getting held. Anamashan. Oh, she was mad about that. Was not happy. She was, her this jersey was brand grabbed. New. That's a brand new jersey. Right. I'd right. be curious, too. She was, who who grabbed her? I can't see the number over there. But I saw the jersey pull from here, so that means it had to have been pretty bad. Mm. <laughs> Robicini will curl one into the box. Swinging towards the goal from the left foot of the Argentinian national. Low line drive, and the keeper, Elise Gowan, had to come out and make a play on that one. It's a corner for the Cats. I wonder if that would have been far right if she hadn't have touched it. It kind of looked like it was, like like it was curling way. outside the frame, but had to make it a quick decision. Like that out of play. Substitutions now for both Georgia College and Georgia Southwestern. We've got Oon coming in for the Bobcats, as well as, is that Alex? Nope, that is number three, Maddie Steven, also for the Bobcats. I didn't catch the numbers for the Kings, did you? Did not, unfortunately. First corner of the day for the Cats. They played short to be Omar's daughter, excuse me. Cutting back is Baldessini, low cross. She scuffed it. Now a chance for Southwestern to get out on a counterattack. It's nice to get those new legs in there for both teams, especially, I'm sure, the... Here comes one of them. It's Crawford. Crawford through the middle of the field up towards Owens. And that was almost interesting. Bobcats got to be careful. Yeah, they can't act like this team isn't a competitor because they are. They mm -hmm. very much are. And just like Georgia knows, you can't be just one score <laughs> up <laughs> and expect to win. Exactly. So. Exactly. Of course, the Southwestern team took Clayton State pretty close to the wire. Their last game, a 1-2 loss for Southwestern. Of course, Clayton State beat the Bobcats. It's a transitive property there. Bobcats, you know, that's <laughs> very similar to how well the Bobcats played against Clayton. So the Southwestern team can pull a few goals here and there. you got to be careful. Now, one thing that was great about the Clayton State game is they have a new head coach. Mm -hmm. And he, I believe, is Irish or okay. Scottish, and he has a very heavy accent. And I loved hearing him yell at his his players because it was it just gave it that extra European feel because sure, it was absolutely. actually a, an accent from Europe, and it was, it was really great. And their assistant <laughs> was really great, too. I think he was a German. So it felt really international in that game. Ashley Graham comes up the field this one. Rolls it out to Sarah Miller. He's taking a Saturday stroll <laughs> through Bobcat Field right now. We'll try to use the outstep of her foot to get it forward. Had it deflected. Bobcats will play to the back. It looks like this rain might be breaking up a little bit. The cloud cover seems to be not as heavy as before. So we're going to be weary of, of the equipment still. We don't want to put that out in the rain. Not quite as messy, though, as it was at the beginning of the day. So I pulled up about the same time Georgia Southwestern did saw a few of them get out of the van. And they did not look happy to be playing in these conditions today. And I can't blame them at all. Bobcats keep looking for goal number two. 27-20 up on the board. Love the clock. Yeah. It's real good. That it, it looks sharp. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got to fig figure that out. So that so I feel accomplished for today. Yeah, Even if I don't do broadcast well, I did that well. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Angie Morian <laughs> for figuring that one out. Jason Tobelman, too, doing the producing today. We Sam Jones, by the way, here with you on the Bobcat Broadcast Network, yeah. too. Glad to have you with us. 
Bobcats lead one nothing. It's been a pretty quiet game for the most part. Only one real shot on goal. I've done the stats for soccer before, and that is like your worst fear. Like you're trying to get all the lineups in, mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, have some time to calm down before the action starts happening, and then 45 seconds in, you have a <laughs> goal, and then you have to try to figure out the assist and where it came from. Bobcats looking to add to their stats here. Have it taken away. Paul Dessini has been everywhere, though, today. The engine is running on a high for Seoul. York having to work around Owens, who's pressing high up the pitch. Hurricanes pressing pretty high themselves, allow Schwartz to get in behind. Schwartz forward to Bianca Daughter, who would stop the run. Was afraid of being off. Slowed up, and now the ball gets to Omar's daughter. Has it cleared away, though. Uno almost found herself in space. Substitution for the Cats. And that's Alex Giles coming in for Sarah Miller, both of who work for our sports information department. So it's nice to see both of them getting some, some action today. Going back to that last play, it looked like the Canes panicked a little bit because they had a three to one advantage over Oon, but Oon is known to get around those advantages, I think. <laughs> Every now and then she's probably the best with the ball at her feet on this entire Bobcat team. Can find space in the blink of an eye and ball to Sini goes to ground pretty easily there. Has the ball taken away. The Canes are playing very aggressively. I, I noticed that str right from the beginning. They're this is going to be a tackling game, and it doesn't look like the refs are going to be calling very much of it. And there and as is, I say that, yep, there's <laughs> a foul on the Bobcats, and Emily Wilhelm throws her palm skyward. Can't blame her too much. Looks like they were both fighting for position there. Owens gets the call, though, and it's a free kick, the first of the day for Georgia Southwestern. Really like Kayla Owens. Kayla Owens has been everywhere up top for Georgia Southwestern. Has been good with the ball at her feet. Just right now, Southwestern can't facilitate anything into her. Free kick coming in, line drive, right to Ashley Graham. Into the stomach of Graham. She rolls it out quickly. Bobcats going to try to get a whole bunch of pink shirts forward. Down the wing. And Giles is fouled. Looks like that was a trip. Is that a foul? Is that a correct foul in soccer? Well, it's essentially just a foul. It's I mean, she, she got into it. There's no, there's no like, there's not necessarily tripping, for like, it. There's, a there's no hooking, no, no, roughing like the that. passer, and, yeah, and so. like, whatever the other penalty is in sure. football. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so there's another. Um, Hurricane on the Peach Belt leaderboard in points. Hawkins has 13 points. That is the sixth highest in the conference. She also was one of the ones I mentioned earlier. She is tied for, th for fourth, I guess you could say, in goals on the season with teammate Owens with six each for of those. I haven't heard much from Hawkins so far. They've been awful quiet. From her, been all Kayla Owens, an attack for the Hurricanes. Lofted forward towards Giles. And Giles will reclaim it. Poor clearance from Southwestern. Cross coming in from Giles. In towards Viana Daughter and cleared by Southwestern. Miss hit. And the Bobcats have a chance to reclaim it. They do. Almost real dangerous on the miss hit, though. As Giles lets that one go between her legs. Almost deep. A hurricane player out instead. Canes get the ball back. I'm looking at these leaderboards here. Another hurricane uh, who is top of the leaderboard in the conference is Elise Gowen as goalie. Now, she is in goal today, and she has 82 saves, besting the, the next best by three saves. 
for the season. So, so despite their three and nine record right now, she she's helping out keeping those game scores low. Ball in the box for the Cats, and it's a corner. The Bobcats' own goalie right now has has three appearances on leaderboard. She is sixth in save percentage, third in goals against, which I guess is a, a bad stat to have, and fourth in goals against average. Corner coming in here. Angie finds Hamilton at the top of the box, and Southwestern once again able to get it away before the Bobcats can get a shot on target. Offense just didn't really click, and it's, it's getting forward, but it's running into a wall over and over again. Every now and then it looks like there's a light at the end of the tunnel for the Bobcats, but instead they pull a Wiley Coyote and just run into the side of the wall. No real <laughs> tunnel, it's just painted on. <laughs> <laughs> Barry getting forward. A lot of space for Giles, and the reason for that is because she's offside. <laughs> A funny thing, Alex was talking to us in, in the office the other day when we were cutting songs for their, their walk-up songs. Mm -hmm. And then we only play their, those songs at the very beginning of the game when they start. And we were talking about everybody's song, and she's like, I don't really care what my song is. It could be a, a joke song because I'm never going to start anyway. <laughs> so I'm just put something random on there. We're getting a lot of playing time today, which is good. And that's one of the good things about a game when you have an opponent you feel relatively confident about. You can get some people some more experience. And so far, Alex has looked good. And this is a pretty ball up towards Viana Daughter. Raggy cuts back, left foot. In trouble for the keeper. And it's very close to the second goal of the day. That was Alex Giles right there who could have had that second one before it was cleared. That was a beautiful kick though. Absolutely nice. beautiful ball over the top. I'm not sure who played it for the Cats, but Yana Daughter almost found herself in on goal. And then of course Giles almost picked up the pieces of a rebound. Alex struggling a little bit here, reclaims possession. Forward towards Maddie Steven. Steven, nice move. Steven cutting back in. Steven still with the ball at her feet. Steven forward and almost got it to Bjorna Daughter. And Raggy will reclaim possession. We marked that as a shot for Raggy, a save by the goalie Elise Yellen. So that kit will add to her 82 saves on the season. She's gotten a few others today, I believe. Well, the Sini will play one in, and every so often, Seoul kind of lost one, maybe a little too much, maybe by accident, but sometimes it finds its way on frame. This one going high, and there you go. How about that? So it uh, wasn't quite on frame. However, Gowan struggled mightily with that one, a high lofty ball like we talked about. It's a little slick, a little rough, and a tough catch. Bounces off the body of Gowan, and that is... Uh, about as rough an own goal as you'll see. It looks like that was not even off her hands, off her chest mm -hmm. into the goal. So I guess she just misjudged where it was coming from. And like you said, too slippery of a ball, but gets the Bobcats up two scores here. Well, she did. She kind of angled her body the wrong way, I think. She kind of angled it so that would if it did deflect, it would deflect back towards the goal instead of away from it. And that was uh, a struggle bus, to say the least, <laughs> for Gowan. That goes down the record books, though, as Sol Baldessini's third goal on the season. Actually, I think that's just going to stay a known goal. Won't get credit for it, but Bobcats still get credit for it on the scoreboard. 2 nothing. And Bobcats starting to feel a little more comfortable here at home. Bobcats certainly have had their fair share of long games. 
three overtime games this season, one of which went to double overtime and tied against Valdosta State very early on right here at Bobcat Field. That was a nil-nil tie. Not the best kind of soccer <laughs> to watch. That was, I don't know if you're talking, that was a nothing-nothing barn burner in my opinion. <laughs> Bobcats had about 400 shots, and 300 of them went off the post, I think. Frustrating night. But here the Bobcats are doing pretty well, even even catching a few breaks here and there, which is something they're not too accustomed to so far this year. Hopefully the bad juju's gone away and a little good luck coming the way of the Cats. It's worked so far today. See if they can continue that. Looking forward for the Cats. Not just credit the game going on at hand, but just go ahead and let you know what's coming up. They head to Armstrong State. Soon as Omar's daughter is in on goal, and she was off. That looked like it was in again. It, the, our nets are just so light, I guess light blue, that mm. I can never tell if it's in or out. I like, the, um, I like the fact that Coach Hope Clark and her two assistants are just, I know they're not chilling over there, but they're just sitting and watching mm. the game. And, and um, Al told me that Hope had said that she's got a lot of seniors on the field this year that know what they're doing, that she doesn't have to yell out adjustments a lot, mm -hmm. that the seniors are actually taking control and adjusting themselves, um, which has proven to be successful for the Bobcats. Allows the Bobcat brain trust to kind of sit back there and make some tactical adjustments when they get in the halftime. A few times it's worked pretty well. Sometimes it has struggled. Look at the UNC Pembroke game, made an adjustment. Pembroke made an adjustment of their own, and it didn't exactly work out for the Cats. That was a loss in that one, but a lot of good minds over there with Matt Seed and Abby Dalton, two first-year coaches, but both very skilled soccer players in their day, and both really good minds that Hope Clark has there. And a good way to replace Coach Tina Gallagher, who's now over there at Emory Oxford University, just up the road near Atlanta. Too far off the foot of Mancinelli there and gloved this time by Gowan. It really is a small world though, talking about the assistant coaches. Matt Sieb actually worked for one of Sports Information student workers' father at Barry College. Okay. Riley, who is on, on our camera right now, he's pumping his fist up and down. <laughs> um, it's just crazy to think that even in the world of, of women's soccer, everybody knows everybody, even in, in a in a school that's not in the Peach Belt Conference. In the middle of the field, Owens has it at her feet. Owens with a nice turn. Really like Kayla Owens. Owens moving forward. We'll try to get into space, a miss hit. I there. feel like that was a shot that she just whiffed on there. Yeah, Shelby Walker couldn't find the ball. She was looking up at the goal instead. She looked Whipped like she took was chuckling about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they got a shot from it. Not a successful shot, but a shot nonetheless. Omar's daughter gets to Mancinelli. Mancinelli back to Uno. Intercepted. 14 minutes left in this one. In the first half at least. And as much as, as we see that zero on the board, a 2-0 score isn't a shutout just yet. They still have 13, 50, and 45 minutes left in this game. So the Bobcats need to be careful that they don't just r sit back, relax, and watch the game themselves, that they're actually keeping it and, and keep fighting for that goal and that getting in that box up there offensively. I really appreciate that you didn't add those numbers together. You just gave <laughs> them the numbers <laughs> left on the board. Okay, so let's do, <laughs> let's do... Angie is a math communications major, <laughs> if you didn't know. Okay, it would be 58. I can do math. <laughs> Georgia College's finest. 58. Two Bobcats leave. Hey, as I Angie was pretty good at math in high school. The wheels school. are turning in okay. her head. <laughs> Couple Bobcats come on. Looks like Sophia Lekas as well as number 12, Mary Lee Amarin. And immediately Amarin gets into the scrum and gets herself a foul. Way to be aggressive coming off the bench, Mary <laughs> Lee. <laughs> Freshman from Marietta, Georgia, Walton High School. I want to say the Raiders. I believe they're the Raiders. If y'all have never heard one of our broadcasts before, Sam Jones sitting next to me is the resident expert on all things mascots. 
in the state very of Georgia, true. and I want to say in the nation, honestly. I, I would probably say that's very, very true. Because I don't, he just pulls these mascots out of nowhere from places he's probably never been before. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've seen a lot of high school games in my day. You, you, you get around here in Georgia. <laughs> I'm not even sure why I question myself. It's the Wallen Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> so we had one um, Free kick, by the way, for the Cats here, Andy. Right. We had one late entry onto the Bobcat roster. Oh, Lekas makes a move. Lekas almost made a pretty, pretty move to find herself in space. Headed the ball backwards, turned around, and almost found the ball at her feet on goal. Go ahead, Angie. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was interrupting the game. <laughs> we had a late add-on to our roster. D I think it was, is well, now I'm not going to remember who it was. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought that was interesting. She, s she came in transferred from another school, but she was a couple weeks late into the season. But we put her on the roster anyways. And she's made some impact plays for us in previous home games, I've noticed. And I th the team seems to be meshing well with her. I wish I could remember her name as I'm talking about her. You know, it would be helpful to tell you who I'm talking about. Bobcats take the ball away, and the ref says play on as Ferry goes to ground. Advantage for the Cats. Advantage away now. And Southwestern takes the ball back. Ten shots for the Bobcats. Three for Southwestern. Two corners for Georgia College, just one for the Hurricanes out of America's Georgia. Home of Habitat for Humanity, in case you didn't know. I didn't know that before you told me earlier before the broadcast. I was surprised to hear that when I learned it a, a year or so ago, that Habitat for Humanity was definitely started in America's Georgia. There you go. Probably about an hour from here. I think there that's pretty cool. There's your America's trivia segment of the broadcast. <laughs> Probably all I can Probably tell you about the last one. <laughs> America's. 10-15 on the clock as Southwestern pushes the ball forward and it's intercepted by the Bobcats. Up towards Mary Lee Amarin. Amarin. Ball forward way too far for Sophia Lekas. If she had just hit it a little bit softer, Lekas might have been able to connect with that and find the open net, but took a little bit too much too much muscle on that ball. Owens. Owens might be the best player on the pitch right now. Beautiful ball forward. Cutting in. It's number nine. Ella Hawkins. Hawkins took a swipe. Excuse me. She dropped it off to Owens. and Almost a goal. Almost a shot on target at least. Yeah. Maybe not a goal. And I'll say this for my father. Wide right. That's how the Giants won their second Super Bowl against the Buffalo Bills, wide right. Um, but that goal was also wide right. That shot right there. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there, there's some <laughs> football for you. As I get Bills some missed a whole bunch of field goals, I think, <laughs> back to back to back there. Four times, I want to say. I want to say four times. I don't know if it was missed field goals four times, but it definitely was four times that they lost in a row. Our NFL segment. Yeah. Please let that be the last one. <laughs> Our uh, graduate assistant for sports information, Reed Van Hort, is from New York, and he's a Bills fan, so I like mm. to give him crap about that. But that could go on and on, but I shall not. Booted out of play throw in for Georgia College. I like to see our boss, Al Weston, got his pink shirt from his wife over there. He was <laughs> wearing green earlier. Aaron Weston doing the work behind the scenes, <laughs> as always. <gasps> 8 15 on the clock as Lee Schwartz has the ball taken away. In the middle of the field now is Lekas. Lekas gets it out wide. It's going to be just out of reach. Amarin, she'll eventually catch up to it. Cross, curling in, and Gallon. Doesn't mess around with this one. She looks like she's being air awful careful scooping up those shots. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want another goal like the last time. Big bear hug every time it comes her way. Can't blame her as Millie York intercepts this one. Mancinelli on the ball. 
Gives it right back. Forward. Oh, that could have been dangerous. Wilhelm with a good header. Owens would have been in if that one had gotten through. York having trouble. Here comes Hawkins. Hawkins very quick. Hawkins moving through. Hawkins shot wide. If she had only gotten that in on frame, I guess you could say, she would have mm -hmm. had that in because Ashley Graham came so far out of the net that there was there was no hope for her to save that. Ashley always very brave coming out. Well, she's one of the best keepers in the conference. Did a good job there and made that net seem a little smaller. Made herself seem a little bigger. Made that shot real difficult on Hawkins. But Hawkins with some speed. That's not a bad one-two up there for Georgia Southwestern with Hawkins and Owens. Can definitely see why they've grabbed six goals apiece this year. We were talking about uh, our goalkeeper, Ashley Graham, before the broadcast and how she's been she's been nursing some injuries. In our last home game, she actually went out um, from an injury, but she seems to be healthy again as Sophia Lekas almost <laughs> kicked the goalie Gowan mm. <laughs> as she came out of the goal to save that ball, and she punts it up real high for a failed southwestern header there but they're trying to bring it over if offensively but it looks like ashley graham is healthy and and playing fine we have an all-star goalkeeper on the bench too jessica catapano who's won excuse me andrew manson only plays it forward to fairy fairy he took a swipe feeds in the ground continue <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, Jessica Catapano, who's won, if I'm not mistaken, Peach Belt Conference Goalie of the Week Award this season. Um, so we have a, a pretty strong goalie roster with those two girls. Owens, a long shot attempt. Going to be gloved by Graham. Make that six shots on the day for Georgia Southwestern. They've had a couple pretty threatening moments. Volleyball is going to start up here in 10 minutes again in Greenville, South Carolina for the PBC SAC crossover. Um, they're going to play Carson Newman for their second match of the day for the tournament. Amarin's going to take a swipe, Angie, and it deflected off. I feel like every time I try to talk, uh -huh. they, they go to, to have a shot. Well, maybe you should keep talking then. <laughs> <laughs> Played forward. Amanda Ferry swung out wide at Schwartz. Mazzinelli and Schwartz with a 1-2 and cleared over towards the corner. Throw in right next to the stick for Schwartz. Well, what I was going to say... While we get this, this isn't a corner. This is a, a free, a throw-in, correct? Correct. See, I'm learning. Um, <laughs> as we get some action here for the Bobcats. Yesterday, we broke some records on the on the volleyball court. Um, Ebony Powers, our star outside hitter, had 19 kills in the first match yesterday. We also Chandler Walson broke the digs record for the school with 44 digs in that same match. It was a five-set match. She bested th that record by 11 digs. And we also had Kayla Brockway get the third most assists in school history. She owned the record for that with 55 assists from last year. She did that twice. And then um, an old high school friend of mine, Kayla, Michaela Patterson, has 54 assists from when she played here. And Kayla had 52 yesterday in that first match. Wishing it was 2-0, but lost the first one against Lincoln Memorial in a five-set tiebreaker. Really tight game there. A couple of 25-23 sets. And Sam wants to talk about soccer. I would like to talk about soccer, <laughs> yes, as that cross is played in. Corner for the Cats. 
a nice job on the volleyball update, Beth. Thank you, thank you. I and try. Andy Moyer and keeping us up to date on all things Georgia College Athletics. Mm. If you need more updates, you can always check out gcbobcats.com. Follow us on Twitter at gcbobcats. Go to the Facebook page as well for all your Bobcat athletic needs. Instagram and Snapchat as well. We're doing really good on Snapchat this year, trying to build that social media. And I have a correction on my update. The Carson Newman game will start in an hour at 5. I read the schedule wrong. So I'll keep you updated then. <laughs> Southwestern trying to get a late attack here in the first half. We're under two minutes forward. Ashley Graham coming well off her line. We'll let this one retreat back into the box. Even the goalies have special jerseys today. Their numbers are hot pink. I have to say my favorite special jerseys of the Bobcats, though, is, is the Softball's Military Appreciation Day jerseys. Camo ones are nice. Those are uh, really pretty nice. Pretty good looking. These are sharp. These are sharp. Uh, volleyball's pinks are sharp, too. As Amarin tried to make a few moves. I'm not sure what my favorite Bobcat uniform is. We've kind of got a not my favorite color combination here. I would say that, but there's a few good designs out there. Look pretty sharp. This one out wide. I and think. Back into the middle towards Ferry. I think my favorite regular one is baseball's pinstripe uniform. Okay. I like That's that not a bad one choice. a lot. Not a bad choice. They have solid blue and pinstripe pants. Mm -hmm. But I really like um, Southwestern stripes on their shirts. That's not a nice. Not kid, is it? Got a whole bunch of lines and shapes kind of going everywhere there with the whole with the vertical stripe on the pants. Yeah. There's your fashion update <laughs> on the GC Popcat <laughs> Broadcast Network. Under 30 seconds here of a 2 nothing game. No timeouts this half. <laughs> <laughs> and you're laughing because... <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> okay. Mancinelli coming forward. Lekis. Lekis moving through towards Mancinelli. Mancinelli with some space. Now it's Amarin. Amarin shot just off target over the bar. And that's how the first half was in. Bobcats get two goals. One from the foot of Amanda Bartholomew and one off the chest of Georgia Southwestern's Elise Gowan. Go ahead, Angie. We have a special treat for you for this live broadcast. We're going to have some special NCAA and TBC PSAs for you during the halftime. We also have the Bobcat Athlete of the Week interview. That was Harrison Stewart from his spectacular three under three round score there. Sorry. He finished 13th on the leaderboard in golf the last tournament, which the team finished fourth overall. Best finish of the fall season for them. So enjoy that, and we're going to take you to halftime. Sam and I will bring you back with a few minutes before the second half begins. Hope you're enjoying this on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. What's up, Bobcat fans? It's Angie Morian here with the Bobcat Athlete of the Week, Harrison Stewart from the golf team. His first award ever coming this week with Bobcat Athlete of the Week. Is that right? Yes. That is awesome, awesome. So the team this week went up to Dahlonega for the University of North Georgia's Invitational and finished fourth overall as a team. But Harrison here led the team with a three over par, under par, <laughs> three under par, excuse me, um, and finished 13th on the individual leaderboard. So tell me, Harrison, what was working out there? Um, well, the first round, I kind of got off to a slow start, and then I was one over most of the day. I finished one over par, but the second round, I was able to, I got two early birdies and went on four in a row on the back nine and just kind of kept it there and shot 66. So that brought me to five under. And third round I shot 74 which put me back to three but overall it was a good tournament. 
So that 66 is just the first one in a while because the last one we had was when head coach now, Patrick Garrick, got it when he was an undergrad here. So how does that – did coach say anything to you about that? Um, I actually didn't know what I – didn't, I didn't know he shot 66 or I didn't know what the record was, but he told me later that I tied him. So that was pretty cool. Tying the coach, that's got to be a big deal there. So how was the course playing? Was it – was it fast? Was it slow? How were the greens? Uh, the, the course was in great shape. The, the fairways were pretty firm and the greens were soft. They had smooth bent greens, which I tend to like putt better on. So it was set up well for my game. What was working the best? Was it your driving, your putting, your fairway game? Uh, the second round when I shot 66 was my irons. I hit a lot of close shots. So I think I only missed one green, so I made it pretty easy. Yeah, when you get it close to the hole, it's pretty easy to get that putt in, yeah. So let's take a step back and talk about your high school career. When did this playing golf in college become a dream or a reality for you? Uh, well, it started pretty young. I've grown up playing my whole life. I played golf, baseball, and basketball, and I kind of really got into golf my freshman and sophomore year of high school and wanted to keep going, and here we are. <laughs> Here we are, that's right, putting breaking records and everything, or tying, excuse me, coach. <laughs> so who was your biggest influence playing the game of golf? Um, it had to be my dad. He, he got me into the game at a really early age. He's, he's a pretty good player, so he was able to pass on a lot of skills to me. And I got to know, as a golf fan myself, who is your favorite professional golfer right now? Uh, well, it's always been Tiger Woods, but... I guess he's not playing. I'd, I'd go with Jordan Speed. He's my favorite. <laughs> Jordan is definitely my favorite golfer. Okay, so that was great. This is Harrison's first Bobcat Athlete of the Week, in case you missed that from the beginning of the video. And Harrison, tell us where y'all are playing next. We play in Orlando at Rio Pinar, the McDonough Cup, in a couple weeks. Awesome, awesome. So you can catch those stats and highlights on GCBobcats.com when that is up. You can go over there now and check the rest of the schedule and see if there are any spring dates up yet. And for this, for Harrison Stewart, for me, this is Bobcat Athlete of the Week. Thanks for watching. The PBC is commitment. The PBC is community. The PBC is competition. The PBC is character. We, we are, are the PBC. We often get the question, where does the money go? More than 90% of NCAA revenue supports 89 championships and more than 1,100 member schools that give $2.7 billion in scholarships each year. Look around you. There are more than 450,000 student athletes competing every year, succeeding on the field, in the classroom, and in life. Bottom line, we put our money where our mission is. If you're passionate for what you do, everything can, you know, can be possible. 
he had no understanding of, of the collegiate athletic experience because that's foreign to how things were back in Mexico for him where town teams existed or club teams but very few school teams and uh, when he found out he had to be a student here I, in that very first conversation Julio says to me one of these days I'm coming to Manchester and I'm going to play on your team and that was 14 years ago and here we are today and every, every time I talk about it or think about it I get chills with his schedule, he is just, it's amazing what he what he balances because I know there's times where he runs on no sleep and it just amazes me because I know if I'm losing an hour or two of sleep, it just drains me. So I don't know how he, he keeps up with with holding a full time job and, and going to class full time and playing you know playing with us every day and then taking care of his family at home. It's it's a it's a miracle. Is what it is, it's incredible. I start on Monday night. I go to uh, to work at midnight. Uh, I work from midnight till seven a.m. Uh, I get off, go home, uh, sometimes I can take a little nap, 15 minute nap, which is good. Um, I have a breakfast, get ready for school, come to class. Uh, right now I have a class at uh, 10, 11, and 1 o'clock. Uh, and sometimes in between uh, 11 class and 1 o'clock I do my homework if I can. I go home, change my clothes, come to frac uh, for practice, uh, get done with practice, go home, have a, a meal, if I still don't finish my homework, I do my homework, and I go to bed around 7.38, take another nap because I don't think it's asleep. Uh, four hours maybe, between three four hours, get up and go to work again. But we, we have very few non-traditional students here. Um, and so to have somebody like Julio with the work that he's done to be here and the work that he's done to stay, uh, is a real example for other students, to be able to talk with students who are uh, experiencing challenges, to be able to say, we've got, we've got students here who are overcoming the same kind of odds that you're facing. Sometimes it's family issues, sometimes it's financial issues. For them to say, to see, there's a possibility for me. There's a way to get from where I am to where I want to be. It's a true example of persistence and uh, just patience and support from a wide variety of people. He married a woman who has supported him all along, and uh, um, he's, he's developed relationships in the community where he's a valuable employee, he's a valuable community person, and people have recognized that and have supported him in his effort to get to where he is right now. If you, if you believe in yourself, you can do it. I mean, it's, everything's possible. Uh, some people call sacrifices, I don't call sacrifice. I think you just, if you really want to do something, you can push yourself and you can do it. And the other thing I can see is, you know, four years, uh, it's not going to be for, for the rest of your life. So maybe you can push your, yourself for, you know, those four years and then you can get, you know, I'm sure you get paid off for your, for your extra effort that you did. Think of the NCAA as a spirit squad, cheering for student athletes at every big event and every small one. We'd be there in the classroom, at graduation, at their first job interview. Okay, so don't think of us as a spirit squad. Think of us as a mascot. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. Think of the NCAA as a marching band. We wouldn't stop with halftime. We'd be full time. Celebrating student athletes in everything they do. Okay, so don't think of us as a marching band. Think of us as a spirit squad. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes.
I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me. The day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. The PBC is commitment. The PBC is community. The PBC is competition. The PBC is character. We are the PBC. We often get the question, where does the money go? More than 90% of NCAA revenue supports 89 championships and more than 1,100 member schools that give $2.7 billion in scholarships each year. Look around you. There are more than 450,000 student athletes competing every year, succeeding on the field, in the classroom, and in life. Bottom line, we put our money where our mission is. Back at Bobcat Field here on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. Sam Jones, Angela Morian here with you at Bobcat Field. Bobcats have a two nothing lead over Georgia Southwestern after one half of play. Amanda Bartholomew at the first goal after only 42 seconds. And this one then later, an own goal from Georgia Southwestern about 19 minutes in. Made it 2 0. So Bobcats looking to get back on track, maybe grab a few more goals. Last time Southwestern was here, they beat them, I believe it was 6 nothing. Yes, it was 6 nothing away last year, and uh, then they was home two years ago, 8 nil. Well, there you go. Bobcats looking to maybe try and match that here. Would be nice to get the offense rolling. That was a clock-stopping foul there, giving Soul a free kick. Yes. Woo! I'm getting turned. And a, a correction there from last half. Soccer does not have timeouts. Well, Most actually, of we found out. Know that I did not. Uh, well, actually, we found out there are there is one timeout. I per believe team. per game. As Balda's or excuse me, Omar's daughter almost found the back of the net. A low shot. Looked like it wasn't going to do much. Skipped a little bit and was aiming right for the bottom left corner. Here's Bartholomew, Bartholomew weaving her way through. Bartholomew goes to ground. That was a good tackle. Clean tackle, and Southwestern can get the ball forward to Owens. Owens, nice touch. Here's Owens. Back now in the middle, taken away by Baldessini. Picked up by the Bobcats, and now it's Giles. Giles pops it forward, and then Bartholomew pops it forward to Anamashan. Anamashan won't get there, though. Turning away and getting out of play is Southwestern, or excuse me, playing it right back to Amanda Bartholomew. Bartholomew in the middle. And Savannah DeVal losing possession. Baldessini picks it up. Giles. No 
Neil Bartholomew. Giles long shot went just wide. Un was there though, looking for it to come down a little to get that rebound into the net, but it was a little too high and out for that. Not a bad thought from Alex. Senior from Bakula, Georgia, former Mill Creek Hawk. Okay, so you're the mascot king. Sure. What was um, Un's mascot in high school? <laughs> <laughs> Who's I from Iceland? I don't know. She. We don't actually have her high school listed. They play club over there. So if you say you know what her team, club mascot is, I'm going to leave. I'm going to get up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's something in Icelandic. I can't even come close in pronouncing. So we'll, 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 we'll call that one a loss for me. You, you can have that one. Well, I didn't I get it get either, so yeah. it's not like. <laughs> <laughs> At right back now, it's number four, Brooke Indris. She's going to have to learn a few new faces here, I think, as the Bobcats get some new folks in. Here's Bartholomew. Now out wide, Umdorg Omar's daughter. Omar's daughter charging in. Um, Omar's daughter cross, scuff shot. Bonamashan picks it back up and a scrum in front of the net. And Bjarna daughter throws her head to the sky and realizes it should be 3-0. I don't really know what happened there. She had a clear shot to it, but it seemed like she just misjudged it. Just a little bit. Now Bartholomew making some shifty moves in the box, plays it towards Duvall, popped up in the air. Savannah's going to recover. Picked up by Soul Soul with this shot, and it's going to skip wide. Bobcats 15 shots so far today. Six for Georgia Southwestern. Three corners for Georgia College. One for the Hurricanes. Elise Gallons, former Camden County Wildcat. Down there in Woodbine. Boots it away, but the Bobcats will pick it back up. That first foul of the half for Georgia Southwestern actually was a yellow card on Mercedes Benitez. So we have to be weary of that because I believe the next card is a red card and a gesture. Am I right? That would be correct. See, we I'm got learning. a hurricane in the book. And a corner for the Bobcats here, their fourth of the day. I believe that's Bjarna Daughter. At the far flag, four pink shirts in the box. High, lofty, free kick. Found the head of York, cleared off the line. Owens has to get it away. Can Baldessini pick up the pieces? Baldessini flying over. Knocks that out of play before Southwestern can get on a counterattack. So put on the Jets there to get to the ball. She came from midfield and... Got some touch on there. Almost daughter absolutely blows by defender. She continues working around and a corner. Good, work, Good tackle there from number 11, Kanisha Roberts. Bobcat corner on the near side. Baldessini will swing it in. Oma's daughter is only 5'2", but she uses that to her, her advantage, and she can scurry around defenders easily and get that rebound kick. Ball in from Baldessini. Good ball, and headed away. It was, once again, Roberts with a nice defensive play. play Giles with the throw in and once again knocked right back out by Southwestern in towards Bartholomew Bartholomew dispossessed in the middle for Southwestern Mercedes Benitez still working around finally gets it back to Roberts Back to Benitez, pressure from Raggy. Raggy can't pull it away, but good pressing from the Cats. Now here's Omar's nice. daughter. Omar's daughter working for it, and a push. And they say the no knees foul. got together, no foul. Un definitely wanted that foul, though. She did. Might have gone to ground a little easy there, but you never know. Raggy plays one off her arm. Handball. 
Bobcat fans are not happy about that no call against Ole Miss daughter. Chill, guys. It's to nothing. <laughs> Well, she did make a fantastic play, mm. only to be disrupted by that Southwestern foul or no foul. In the books is a no foul. Or not in the books at all. That's true. Uh -huh. This one forward, it's Owens. Owens gets five. Bobcats got to clear on the line. They're going to have plenty of time. It was never on frame. I but feel like uh, Millie and, and whoever else that is over there were going to collide and push it in, act trying Millie to save and it. Millie and Brooke Indris were almost fighting for it. You're exactly right. Like I said, that was never going on frame. It was tough to see from our angle, but again, dangerous. Bobcats can't let Southwestern back into this one. No reason to make this interesting. No reason to give them another goal from the 43-1 career. Uh -huh. Again, Southwestern hasn't won a conference game since 2010. Have a chance to get on the board here. A long shot. That a tough angle for Hawkins at the side of the net. I think we have Jessica Catapano in goal now for the Great. Bobcats. We made a switch. As I was saying last half, both of our goalies are are very strong. I I personally think Jessica could be starting as well. She could. She'd start for just about any other peach ball team. But Ashley Graham is also very, very good. And you don't have a bad choice with either. And, of course, if you can play them each and two separate halves, make them focus for one half, make sure they're absolutely there, and not have to worry about too much of a drop-off, that's an advantage for the Bobcats. Mm -hmm. Also makes the opponents adjust to another goalie. As you were styles, saying, you're absolutely right. Ashley likes to come out into the box often. In the middle, <laughs> Southwestern plays at the back line. Bartholomew pressing up towards Owens, taken away by Georgia College. Another Bobcat on the floor, a couple people on the floor. Gustafson has it intercepted by Endress. Endress forward to Omer's daughter. Omer's daughter wreaking havoc on the right side, but a poor decision from Uno. Good pressure from Anamashan. Back up to Gustafson. Slide. Tackle knocks it out of play. I think one of my favorite fun facts about the Georgia College soccer team is your fun fact about the two Icelandic players about how Raggy has listed her biggest fear on our bio sheet online as her her teammate, Un Omerstocker. And uh -huh. I think that is hilarious. I know, 5-2, like you said, but very, very tough. You don't want to mess with her. And, of course, the team loves her. They saw them joking around today earlier. And warm-up shot from Anamashan going to go wide. Both the Icelandic players fit in very, very well here. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see more international players come into Georgia College. Well, you look at the roster right now, a lot of folks from Georgia, which is fine, but you always like to have a little bit of uh, new insights from different places come into a club and different styles of play as well that stem from those kind of cultural mm -hmm. uh, excursions there. But... Uh, that's one thing I love about our tennis program and the Peach Belt tennis program in general. Mm -hmm. is we have a, a lot of international players in it. It's so fun Here's to go to one of those games. Here's one of the Icelandic players getting out to Bartholomew, and she was off. Nice finish, though. Put it in the bottom right corner. Whistle blew before she had a chance, though. There was one of those slides I was looking for earlier in the game from this wet ground. I think it's drying out a little bit. Haven't seen rain in a while. Nice touch there from Una, too, to sign the Bartholomew. Sometimes she holds on to the ball a little too long, and then it can cost her. But there, she was quick, made the right touch at the right time, and almost got an assist. Good head to bring it back for the Canes into their offensive play. Oh, this could be trouble. Hawkins, the speedy Hawkins cutting into the box. Hawkins cutting forward. Hawkins cutting back. Good job by Catapano. That was a tough one to follow there. She was zigzagging all over the place. 
Hawkins is one of the fastest players I've seen all season in the Beach Belt. Would love to have her blue and green long ball over the top towards Omar's daughter. Went out too far wide for it to be much of a threat, but now a chance for Uno to make a move. Gets it around Gustafsson. Gustafsson plays good defense, though. Picked up by Bjorn's daughter. Now here's Omar's daughter, and offside. And She's not Uno happy about that. <laughs> not happy with the line referee there. We have a correction on the shots. Bombcats are, have 14 shots now. I'm not sure how that happened. Eight shots for the Hurricanes. The stats are very much in favor of Bombcat offense and defense, but I really have seen a strong program here with the Hurricanes. They have been pressuring the Bobcats more so than maybe Georgia College should be letting them. Ball forward to Anamashan, great ball forward. Raliat can't get the shot off. Good defense once again from Kenesha Roberts, who's probably the MVP back there at the back for Southwestern so far, a senior from Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. Transfer from a new one I've never seen before, USC Salkahatchee. Oh. That'll be Soul Baldessini taking the corner kick for the Bobcats from the right side, the near side. Bobcats didn't know where Soul was practically walking over there. <laughs> she adjusted the ball just right on the ground. Whoa, cross in near post, headed away. Bobcats might get a second chance, but cleared off. Nope, got out before they had a chance to clear it. If they had cleared it <laughs> before one of the line. It would have been right back to Baldessini. So he gets another shot at this corner kick. Far post. Oh, goodness. A great run there from Savannah Duvall. And she just mistimed it. That would have been a beautiful goal off the corner. No one marked Duvall. And that's one of the most exciting moments of the day so far for the Bobcats. Just missed. Just over 30 minutes left in this game. Bobcats still up 2-0. On Rashad. Far off the ball. Nice job by Southwestern. This time, Omar started tracking back, though. Nice cut. Brings a defender to her knees. Absolutely juked her out. It doesn't amount to much, though. It looks good. And now, Michelle Gustafson will pick herself up and try to get an attack going. Instead, it's intercepted by the Bobcats. Almost a little bit of a coif turn there from Momer's daughter. And absolutely destroyed Michelle Gustafson. Foul on Caps. Getting a little chilly here at the Bobcat Field. I see a lot of players on the bench put on their jackets. Millie York, good defense on Owens. Nice positioning, wins the ball. Counterattack starts for the Cats. Forward from Raggy, got to the feet of Anamashan. Anamashan might have a chance at a long shot. Lining it up, slides it through to Omar's daughter. She can't get there in time. Pretty, pretty. Interplay there from Georgia College. One of the prettier attacks we've seen all season. A big ovation. Boone really Bobcat wanted fans. that one. She's very upset. She she missed that, but that was a heck of a play by Georgia Southwestern goalie there to Gallen come out. Off her line. Brave play too. Would love to see more of that from the Bobcats. Players getting in behind, making runs. Something that's been Far too lacking at times for this Georgia College attack. Gianna Daughter back in the middle. Bartholomew out wide to Duvall. Duvall took a swipe at it. Went to ground, couldn't get her footing right. I wonder if that was a shot that she just couldn't angle correctly because of the wet grass there. I would imagine so. 
Looked like she had her eye on goal. Another line drive goal kick from Gallon. Moon's going to take advantage of that or try to anyways. Here in that pink line there. In the middle to Raggy. Raggy at the edge of the 18-yard box just too far. Kind of reach for on him, Sean. Twenty-seven fifty left in this one. Looking forward for Georgia Southwestern. They go up to North Georgia. That'll be on the nineteenth. I believe that's Tuesday, and that could be a rough time of it if Southwestern doesn't bring their A game. North Georgia very very good. Quality, quality soccer team as that one's too far for Uno. After that, they play Francis Marion at home. That North Georgia game at home by the way as well. Mm. Final two games are on the road. Young Harris and Lander will close out their season. I believe the beginnings of playoffs for PBC is, is right at the beginning of November. Yep, the semifinal is November 4th, and then we got the final on the 6th. Right now, so far, your PBC standings, Columbus State sits at the top 6-1 and one record in the conference. Armstrong State right behind them. North Georgia in the three spot. Clayton State in fourth. Followed by UNC Pembroke, Montevallo, Young Harrison, Flagler, Georgia College on the outside looking in. Right now, a win today would help that out a little bit. Bobcats do make it. It looks like they'll be on the road against a very good team, one of the big three of Columbus State, Armstrong State, and North Georgia. So really shocking to see the Bobcats down that low. One and four record. Thought we had a lot of talent on this team coming. I still think we do, and just hasn't come together. A lot of bad breaks in conference, and Bartholomew came from the offside position. It's finally called. We had a couple games already today in the Peach Belt. Montevallo played UNC Pembroke in Pembroke. That was a 4 nothing final in favor of the Braves. Oh, excuse me. That was in Dahlonega, Georgia. I believe Pembroke is still cleaning up from Hurricane Matthew. We also had a 9 nothing Columbus State win over Francis Marion, and that was in Columbus. We'll have North Georgia against USC Aiken at five, as well as Lander against Young Harris. And Clayton State will take on Armstrong State at home starting at six. So that's your PBC roundup for today. Francis Marion has yet to win a game all season. So Georgia Southwestern could be looking at that one on senior day and saying, hey, maybe we get our first conference win in a long while. The seniors have never won one. On the shine up towards Uno. You know, with a lot of space and a lot of space for Rackney if they're beyond a daughter. She has to make up for it and gives the ball away. Oh, the Cini lofts it. Homer's daughter, if she would have kept running, would have had a chance at getting to the ball. Instead, it deflects off her goal kick. Bobcat's staying pretty static here. With their setup, it looks like now we're going to see a couple of substitutions, at least one. Right here, as Anamashan goes off. I believe that's Amarin coming in. Two more subs await the Bobcats on the far side. Maybe just one more. Omar's daughter showing off some skill, flicks it over. <laughs> Looked pretty good. <laughs> Almost good, good catch. <laughs> Almost. From an athletic trainer over there. Here are those two subs for the Bobcats. One of them's Elise Schwartz. The other. Renee Mike. Renee Mike. The freshman from Kuva Trinidad. It's a long way to come to play Georgia College soccer. There we go. There's another international presence mm -hmm. on the team. Always good. I do love how Millie York from England plays in Millie for the Bobcats. That's nice. I mean, you think she planned that? 
I, I want to, I hope so. Like, uh, I, I, that's how I envisioned it in my head. <laughs> I'm, you need to go to a school in Millie because my name is Millie. Amron was trying to make a move on the edge of the box, couldn't do it. Four international players, by the way, for the Cats, if you count Miss Renee Mike, who just joined the team. A couple from my son, of course, Millie York from Hove, England. And now Renee Mike. Millie York's got to feel right at home in this kind of weather. This is summer right. in England. <laughs> Imagine her name, Mike, does not feel great. <laughs> right. Or maybe she does. It's a lot cooler than she would be playing in. Maybe. In maybe. Dad. Raggy seemed like slow getting up there. That was, oh, that was Soul. Excuse me. She's been seeing a lot of uh, field time today, so maybe she might be getting some tired as there's 22-30 left in this game. With a foul on Georgia College? Yes. Pretty close one, too, for that free kick. Not a bad position. Four blue shirts are forward. Make it five now. On the left side of the box. Ball played in. It's not a bad one at all, but headed away by Duvall. And now the Bobcats are going to get out quickly. Amarin moving forward. Long ball up towards Bartholomew. That's pretty. Bartholomew continuing the pressure. Played back and miss hit. But it does the trick by Tor Gowan. Amanda wanted that third goal by the looks of how she was running. And taking on 2-1 odds and it didn't Double seem any cut. pink shirts were anywhere near her. But she was going to try anyways. And we have a sub coming in for Seoul. It's Amanda Ferry. Paul Desimi exits after moving all over the place today. She has not stopped this entire time. Good day for Seoul. Just get the much deserved break. Elise Schwartz is going to take the throw in here, close to the corner kick on the near side. Bartholomew tried to cross, went to the corner. How many corners does this make it? Eight today for the Bobcats. Bobcats is have as many corners. Uh, Southwestern does shots. The Honor Daughter plays it in. Omar's daughter was reaching high for it, but Gowan punched it away. Giles. Ball played back in was Bartholomew off. No, she was on, but it was just a little too far. Here comes a sub for Georgia Southwestern. Out goes number five. It's Courtney Keeley. And in comes, I can't see her jersey number. No front jersey numbers for Southwestern. Makes it real hard on us. Well, actually, I think there are right on the collar. Maybe in white? Mm -hmm. Impossible to see <laughs> from where we are. We'll get you that new player in just a second. I think it's number three. It's Emily Blecka. Or Blesha, excuse us, we don't have a pronunciation guide today for Southwestern. Off the vibe. Oh, Over no. Southwestern's <laughs> car took a shot. Another, another victim. Last year when Sam and I were broadcasting softball, there was a foul, and we were like, oh, it looks like that's going to hit a car. We were joking. Comes back five minutes later, there's a dent in our boss's side of his vibe. We're just good luck. <laughs> Under 20 left to play in Milledgeville. I'm petting a puppy right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about Bobcat outside. Oh, this game. one deflected a lot of pressure from Mancinelli. As I talk about dogs. Again, see, I just I keep <laughs> talking the whole game. Every time you bring up a non sequitur, <laughs> we continue to pound the, uh, the defense of Georgia Southwestern. <laughs> That was almost another huge mistake from Gowan. And the Georgia Southwestern defense. Four goal kick, headed back towards the line. Gowan's gonna have to come pick it up. It won't reach the line. This 
time. She'll just pick it up as Mettinelli comes forward. Just under 18.30 left in the game. Still 2 nothing. Bobcats have 20 shots, 8 corners. Canes, 8 shots, 1 corner. Bobcat bench going to have to make a play as this one's knocked out. Bobcats are also leading in fouls. They have five to Southwestern's four. One of those four, though, was a yellow card right at the beginning of this half. Substitution is number 18. Shateria Crawford comes out. And I believe Owens comes in. Really been impressed with Kayla Owens today. Done a nice job. Sophomore from Kathleen, Georgia, over near Augusta Veterans High School. Mascot? Oh, gosh. I don't <laughs> know if veterans actually a thing. I want to say Yellow Jackets. I know that's not right, though. And there's a foul right on the edge of the box, and the ref immediately over. No card. And this is an excellent spot for Georgia College. Have to see who takes it. Going to be tough to get it up and down quickly. Right outside the box so there. I'd say 19 yards away from goal. And so you have Zathania Mancinelli. She will take it. Luckus is looking for that rebound on the wide side. Mancinelli low. Driving shot. Goal. <laughs> Excellent free kick from Anya Mancinelli. And somehow it skittered and scuttered its way through and found the back of the net. You said it was going to have to be quick to get it up and down. She didn't even get it up. It she was all down. down. All down. Worked out well. I don't know how that one got through the mass of bodies and legs. But it made it through the thicket. And popped out on the other side in the back of the net. Anya Mancinelli. Her second goal of the season. She started in two games, but played all nine. And now the Bobcats want one more, pushing forward. Can't get possession away. Taken back by Southwestern. 44-1 to keep in track at home. <laughs> Omar's daughter has had the ball. About as much as Southwestern has had this entire half. Montanelli back to Uno. Montanelli made a run and it just came up short. Under 16 minutes. Montanelli gets the goal off the free kick. The sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, former St. Pius Lion. I'll admit it, I had to look that one up. <laughs> I put too much pressure on you now. You did. I, that was way too big a title you gave me there. I'm just in awe of, of your knowledge of mascots. Omar's daughter coming in, crossing the box. Montanelli was there again. Duvall has it taken away. Things starting to open up a little bit late. Maybe some fatigue, maybe some apathy setting in for Southwestern and Uno. Has it knocked out? Maybe they're just too cold. Because it is getting very chilly around here. <laughs> Schwartz with the throw in. Another chance for the throw in down the corner. So towards the edge of the box, cleared back to Ferry. Ferry might take a swipe. Long shot. Didn't have a whole lot of pop on it. Backspin makes it difficult to deal with, and Mancinelli almost found the ball at her feet. Good pressure from Anya. Long cross. Cleared by Roberts, who's had a good game. Denisha Roberts might be his player of the day for Southwestern. Omar's daughter at the edge. Has it completely taken away from her. I think she just kind of got confused there and halted, giving the Kane the availability to get that ball back. 
Here's Sophia Lekis cutting in. Lekis in towards Mazzanelli. Can she bring it down? She pops it up. Was there for Ameren. Bobcats have to reset. Intercepted by Owens. Owens, pretty pass. It's Hawkins back to Owens, back to Hawkins. Hawkins plays it back in the middle. It's Mercedes Benitez who tries to get it out wide. Southwest Western gives away possession. Next home game for the Bobcats is on October 22nd. Next Saturday against the Young Harris as Amarin makes a nice move in. Amarin with a chance. Curler saved. May not have been on target, but knocked out of play anyways by Gowan. If you're looking for a weekend to come into town and watch, Bobcat soccer or any Bobcat sport mm -hmm. and have a good time it would be next weekend we have the PBC conference championship for cross country in the morning soccer in the afternoon and it's the deep roots festival the annual festival this one's going to be floated around in the box scrum for it in front of the goal is cleared away by Southwestern it's a big weekend yeah so make your hotel reservations now it's a long day for me, I just realized, too. <laughs> right, right. Be up at 7 a.m. at the cross-country field uh -huh. and going to bed at 1 after the concert deep roots. Uh-huh. Long, long day. But it'll be a good one. I'm sure. Always is. Always love deep roots down here at Georgia College. One of the best weekends of the year. Hope you'll come on down and stop by Bobcat Field when you get a chance. It's also family weekend, alumni weekend, and fall fest. I believe. Yeah, when Georgia College decides to do something, they <laughs> decide to throw it all on one day. <laughs> well, what better event for prospects, prospective students to see but Deep Roots? I Absolutely. mean, that's a great event. Absolutely. Our next home broadcast, though, will be on Wednesday as volleyball takes on USC Aiken in the Centennial Center. That'll be a great, great match as well. Substitutes coming in for Southwestern. Leaving game. Well, not yet. Bobcats want to play quickly, take the throw in, and Amarin misplays it. Intercepted again. But I want to see the interception stats today for the Bobcats. They have to be astronomical at this point. Owens has been very good in the hold-up play as well. Uses their body well. Makes a lot of crisp, sharp passes into space. That's a nice pass from Hawkins to get it forward and tries to get it to Owens. Owens is going to be on go. Owens with the chance. Shot. Save. Catapano. Long shot with Catapano off the line. Saved again. That Great was a risky job. move Catapano. on that first save, though. She came out and just laid down. Became a block. If that ball had been a foot higher, it might have gone in. But good reaction on her to get that second save right away. Pretty attack. Combination of Owens, Hawkins, and Miranda Taylor, who does a nice job when she gets the ball at her feet. That's a good combination for Southwestern. They should probably go to it a little more often. They're on the left side. Taylor, the fullback, but very good getting forward so far today. Savannah Duvall, space too far for Uno. And Uno wants a goal. She does. Uno she really wants a goal. She does. Anytime there's even a little mistake that I don't even think of as a mistake, she hits <laughs> on seven. I love her passion. Ferry fighting for the ball. And a ferry against Owens. Owens being physical. Now here's Taylor. Hawkins back to Taylor. Taylor again. Excellent getting forward. Outrunning Elise Schwartz right now. Schwartz finally catches up. Back in the middle. And they get away from the combination. And they struggle. Throwing for Elise. Under 10 minutes in Milledgeville.
Ball played back towards the middle, intercepted by the Bobcats. Lekis with a nice touch. Lekis finds herself in space. Lekis showing off the wheels. Sophia getting forward, falling off the ball. Nice defense. Good recovery from Georgia Southwestern. Here's Taylor. And taken away and knocked out of play by Savannah Duvall. Now the substitutions can come in for Southwestern. Number 12, Bree Rita. And number 17, Shelby Walker go out. Interior Crawford comes back in. And I'll tell you in a second who that second sub for Southwestern was. Since we can see a number. That one four to Owens, almost difficult for the Bobcats. Number 19, Avery Hyde. I think one of the worst jerseys we've seen here at Bobcat Field, numbers-wise, it might have been, I think it was Newbury. They had a charcoal gray uh -huh. shirt with red numbers that were just the outline of the numbers, dark red. Tough to see. We couldn't see them at all up here. Uh, oh, ooh, hard collision. And that could be a card on the way for number 18, Shatiria Crawford, who charged hard into a Bobcat player. I can't see who's on the floor. Ref immediately calls time to check on her. No trainers out yet. Then he just called for him. And Crawford going to get a talking to. Pulled over. Would think it'd be a booking. And there's the card. Hard, hard foul. Pretty unnecessarily. Just late in the game, down three. She didn't seem like she really wanted to hear what the ref had to say either. No, she she sure kind of walked away, and he was like, okay, I'm taking the card out. Was that Alex Giles? There on I'm the ground sure. that took that hit? It's whoever. She's no, I think it's only Wilhelm. Yep, she's holding her, holding her arm. They called the trainers out, but she had gotten up then, I think, when as soon as he called them. Um, she was like, nope, I'm going to keep playing, and they backed up, went back on the near the bench. We'll see if the Bobcats can keep their heads straight here. No reason to make this contentious at the end. As we creep under the 7.30 mark in the second half. Middle intercepted by Renee Mike. Mike, nice job getting the ball forward. And now the Bobcats have a chance to counter. Omar's daughter forward. Good ball to Amarin. Amarin shot. Just got past the keeper, but it went wide. I yeah, wonder if she got angle. like a fingertip on that just to redirect it enough to make it wide. I can't see from here, but. She's not acting like it. She's going over for a goal kick. No reason for her to take credit for it <laughs> if she did. Six thirty-five. Anya Pensinelli took that on the bad part of the head there, stumbled for a second. Southwestern brought it out wide, brought it back in. Shatiria Crawford. Crawford tried to get it to Owens. And now a long ball to Hawkins. Hawkins tried to take it off her chest. It was a good thought. She'll reclaim the ball near the goal line. Back to Taylor. Taylor needs to make a quick decision. Got it in the middle. Moving through and up to Crawford and intercepted by the Cats once again. The Great hurricanes. defense all day from Georgia College. Yeah, the Hurricanes looked like they were taking a little bit too much time with the ball after each pass. Oh, the ball gets through the legs. Lekis on goal. Lekis shot. Four to nothing. <laughs> Great ball in Umbjorg. Omar's daughter right between the legs of the center back. 
That was Roberts, I believe, who's had a great game today. Couldn't get a foot on that one. And put Lekas on goal. Lekas didn't mess around. That might have to be good enough for Oon today. <laughs> a nice little <laughs> assist there for taking the Bobcats up 4 nothing. Lekas is their first goal of the season. Kind of surprising for Sophia, but gets her in the goal column for Umbjorg. Assist number two on the season. Of course, Umbjorg didn't realize that she's still looking for her first goal of the year. Maybe that's where some Maybe of the frustration comes in. Maybe she does realize it. <laughs> Mancinelli has the ball taken away, dispossessed, and the Bobcats take it right back. Like it's chasing after it. Look at Giles picking it up back to Luck. It's Giles now. Giles cutting in. Giles with some space. Curling shot. Grounder to Gallon. Mancinelli is also going to get an assist on that goal. Okay. So double assist for Oma's daughter and Mancinelli with the first goal for Luck. Four thirty, and there's a foul. Free kick for Georgia Southwestern. Someone yelling over there. Not sure who it was. Might have been a Bobcat fan. <laughs> Don't know what they said. Draw some laughs from the crowd, though. So good job, guy <laughs> over there. A plus. Chance for a cross and knocked out of play. Corner. Just the second of the day for Southwestern. Southwestern. Somewhat surprisingly, it has 10 shots. I'm not sure where those 10 <laughs> shots have come in. It sure hasn't seemed like much, but they've kind of piled up over time. Number four. That's a whole lot of bodies. Only four not in the box right now for Southwestern. Southwestern's had more fouls on in this game, but the Georgia College has had more offsides calls. The Canes have just have managed to stay on sides the entire game, which is good. Granted, they haven't had the ball yeah. offensively as much as the Bobcats Oh, my daughter continues the pressing, Angie. She has been fantastic this half, taking over the ball on the right wing. She hasn't come out yet. Oh. Nutmeg for Omar's daughter. Almost led to something, you know. Sometimes those look pretty, and Omar's daughter is very guilty at this live time. Like, they'll look pretty, but they aren't effective. That one was almost effective, almost extremely effective. <laughs> She's Thank laughing you. at the crowd. She is definitely a Bobcat crowd favorite. Lil Uno with the shifty footwork. Always fun on the ball. Amarin going to work around. Amarin coming through. Amarin continue to work. Amarin getting around one. Amarin shot. Goal! My goodness. Take a bow. Mary Lee Amarin. Put the world on your shoulders, why don't you, and take a swipe at it. Only Worked through and left bodies on the floor in her wake. In a vicious, heart-wrenching shot. To the top of the net. Good night, Mary Lee Amron. Goal of the season? Goal of the season? Yes. Goal of the season? Yeah. Sure. Right, it was sure. her first career goal, only second or third game starting. Or playing, excuse me, words. I can't do them. What a way to start your tally as a Bobcat. Mary Lee Amron. That was fantastic. And now. Southwestern with a chance to bring one back. Nearing the two-minute mark. Bobcat fans really loving this game. They've been great all game. Enjoying the Bobcats playing good attacking soccer. That one missed hit. Ancinelli trying to get to the ball. Cleared out by Southwestern. Going to love to see the replay of that Ameren goal on GCBobcats.com later. Absolutely excellent. Under two minutes. Five nothing Bobcats. 26 shots, nine corners for Georgia College on the day. With the win, Bobcats going to move to five, four, and one on the season. Move to two and four in conference. Georgia Southwestern will fall to three and ten. 
0 and 8 in the conference, still looking for that first conference win in a long time. Jim might have a chance against Francis Mary, you know. I'm not going to be counting them out for North Georgia, but that's going to be tough sledding for them. Francis Marion, though, coming to town. Francis Marion yet to win a college or a conference game or a college game as I misspeak, but somehow speak correctly. <laughs> 0 and 11 on the year. Would love to see Southwestern get that conference win. Glad they didn't get it here. Bobcats just a little too good. Goals from Bartholomew, Lekis, Amarin, an own goal, and a goal from the foot. Bobcats trying to work it back through. Excuse me, Ransom Elliott's got that fifth goal. I couldn't remember for a second. And that will do it here from Bobcat Field. Five, nothing win for Georgia Call to be back in just a second with your full time stats and the interview with Coach Hope Clark, I believe, right, Angie? Yes, yes, we're going to have an interview on the field, post-game interview with Coach Hope. As soon as we get everything set up and put together, and Sam will bring you the final stats of this Bobcats 5 nothing win. So it was 8 nothing, 6 nothing, and now 5 nothing. past three years uh -huh. against the Hurricanes. And he'll bring you those after a short break. And then I'll bring you the interview. All right, back in just a second on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. Bobcats, big winners today. The PBC is commitment. The PBC is. The PBC is commitment. The PBC is community. The PBC is competition. The PBC is character. We are the PBC. We often get the question, where does the money go? More than 90% of NCAA revenue supports 89 championships and more than 1,100 member schools that give $2.7 billion in scholarships each year. Look around you. There are more than 450,000 student-athletes competing every year, succeeding on the field, in the classroom, and in life. Bottom line, we put our money where our mission is. Think of the NCAA as a spirit squad, cheering for student athletes at every big event and every small one. We'd be there in the classroom, at graduation, at their first job interview. Okay, so don't think of us as a spirit squad. Think of us as a mascot. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. Think of the NCAA as a marching band. 
We wouldn't stop with half time. We'd be full time. Celebrating student athletes in everything they do. Okay, so don't think of us as a marching band. Think of us as a spirit squad. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. Sam Jones back here with you at Bobcat Field as the Bobcats get a big 5 nothing win over Georgia Southwestern. Move to 5-4-1 and one on the season. Their second conference win, 2-4, and four, a big conference win for them. We're going to get an interview with Coach Hope Clark and Mary Lee Emerin in just a second. I think we are just about ready to go down there. So we are going to go ahead and send it back to Angie here on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. I think we had some technical difficulties on that one, folks. <laughs> we apologize. 
<laughs> we were doing our best to get that to you. you. Had some trouble with the mic down there. We promised it was a really well done interview and a good one. Uh, Coach Doug Clark, very optimistic after the big win. Mary Lee Amron, very happy to get her very first goal as a Bobcat. Meanwhile, here up top, that's just about going to wrap it up from Bobcat Field as Georgia College knocks off Georgia Southwestern. Final score, five to nothing here on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. For Angela Morian and our producer, David Solberman, thanks to Connor King and Riley Williams for working the camera today. My name is Sam Jones. Glad to have you with you once again on the Bobcat Broadcast Network. We'll see you next time. Have a good night, folks, and go Bobcats.